one of the things that we're trying to do, you want white oak as the best tree for shiitakes. We're trying to do our mushrooms sustainably, meaning we're trying to use species that we cut in intermediate thinnings. Mm -hmm. Trees that we would normally just use for firewood or leave on the ground. The interesting thing is, you would never go in after 40 years and thin out the white oak. That's your timber tree. Hmm. You thin out to promote the white oak. So it doesn't make sense to cut your white oak for shiitakes Ooh. if you're a landowner. So we're using sour wood, red oak, here's a white oak, um, cherry, red maple, there's probably even some tulip in here. And so we're trying different types of logs. Um, you want something four to six inches in diameter, four foot long. Hmm. What the students do, if you can look at this, see all these little holes? Yeah. Students spent three weeks. Our crew is 14 people. They spent three weeks with a drill, a plunger, and a can of wax. They drill in a hole, they have a plunger that they stick in a mixture of mushroom spawn and sawdust, put it in a can, stick it in a hole, press it, it fills that up, and then another one paints it with wax to close it. Wow. And then they wax the ends so that no other mushrooms get in there, no other fungus gets in there and, uh, and volunteers. Um, then we let them sit for a year. And um, what you're really harvesting is the fruiting bodies. Um, what you do is you leave them sit for a year and over that course of the year they grow mycelia hyphae within the log. So the log sits here, you don't want it to fruit, you want it to just fill up with those mycelial hyphae. And then after a year we put them up on these ricks. And the ricks are where they fruit. I don't know if we can find some. They've been harvesting, the, stu the students been harvesting. You can walk up here and look. Is there mushroom season? Uh, there is, some are better than the others. Spring is good, midsummer when it's hot and bad and fall is pretty good and it cools off. Huh. Black thing. Is that the wax? Yeah, that's the wax. They've already harvested, they've harvested recently. I can see where some of them are off. Um, what, so, color, what color are they? Like they're brown. brown? Yep. Okay. I don't see a single one. But how do they get, how do they grow if the wax is on there? They grow either out of the hole in the wax or just right out of the wood. They okay. just grow right out. What is this? What's that? That's volunteers. Those are not shiitakes. Do not eat those. <laughs> so then we put them up. The really cool thing we do is there's three things that promote fruiting of shiitakes. Change in temperature, change in moisture, and the Japanese say a physical shocking. So what we do is they have this very intricate system. The students do it all. They know which of these they're trying to get mushrooms out of and which ones they've already done. And what they'll do is they'll take a rick, <coughs> when it's time to get them to fruit, they'll grab these, they'll fill that tank up with water and they'll soak them for 24 hours. And then the really cool thing they'll do is after they soak for 24 hours, they'll take them out and go on a rock and then put them back up. What the Japanese say is, during thunderstorms, when you had fronts coming in, it was the physical vibration of the thunder that promoted them to uh, to fruit. Yeah. Does it have to be written in a paper to be true? I don't think so. 